What's up? Happy New Year for those of the Hebrew tribe. I did want to remind you to subscribe, of course, on all the other video sharing platforms, but while Library and BitChute are functional, I don't know about Rumble. Had a little problem uploading my latest video on RBG, so hopefully this goes up. Uh, otherwise, it would be a shame. Anyway, so we're going to do a book review today. I might go back to doing book reviews um, more frequently, depending on how much time I have. But this is one I wanted to sort of reflect on. Uh, went and read this about four or five weeks ago. And it concerns, it's, it's called We Stand Divided by Daniel Gordis. And it focuses a little bit more. Now, for, for some of you, this might be a little bit more of, a, you know, something you don't care about. <laughs> you know, some of you who watch this channel. But bear with me. I think it could touch on some other topics that uh, could be a little bit more universal than the actual subject of the book. <laughs> so We Stand Divided talks about the growing gulf of attitudes between American Jews and the Israeli government as well as the majority of the Israeli public. And it goes into a lot of both the religious and social issues that divide the two. So it is, um, and, and one of the things that I really found fascinating about it was that Dan Gordis who wrote the book, he didn't just talk about the modern divisions between them. He says, you know, according to him, he brings ample evidence. Among Jewish Americans, the Zionist premise that, that there should be a homeland for the Jews in uh, historical Israel, which is also, you know, in, in modern times, it's, you know, it's called geographically, it's called Palestine. Obviously that there there's a people who call themselves Palestinians. So there was never a consensus in favor of that within the American Jewish public. But prior to World War II, there had been plenty of opposition within the American Jewish Committee, which was a larger, one of the larger, um, I guess you would call it, uh, representative organizations within the Jewish community. And there was a major faction that was saying that they should probably oppose the founding of the of Israel. So those of you that are saying, well, it's always been some sort of grand Jewish project to refound the state of Israel or, or, or you know, the, the historical state of Israel. It's never been a full, um, a fully agreed upon project. It's it's always been something that only a, sm a portion of the Jewish community has supported. And you might you might ask, well, what's the reason for that? Well, people fought for many years to build the things here in the United States for the Jewish community that was here, and they tried to build institutions, they tried to build businesses. They tried to build communities here. And for them, it seemed as if this was going to be a very uh, stiff competition. And, and they did not want to see basically a lot of their hard work to become accepted and successful here in the United States undone by this massive movement for, by, to move people over to the Middle East, right? So it, it is, um, it's certainly delves into some of the counter arguments of the era some of the philosophical problems if you know who Hannah Arendt is she she has, at, at some point appeared to be a huge critic of the of the whole scheme to create a Jewish state and there was at the same time besides the practical criticism there there were people who started to raise an issue where they said, well, we, we don't really believe that there should be an armed Jewish occupation of, of the Palestinian territories, as there has been after 1967, there was the seizure of, of the West Bank in Gaza. So that was something that precipitated 
a larger shift in attitudes. There, there was always, uh, of course, a division in attitudes, but there's, there's also been a shift among progressive Jewish Americans against Israel related to that specific issue. Now, um, the other issues that he, he discusses are ones pertaining to specifically the ritual practice of the Jews in, in the United States as opposed to in Israel. And, of course, I've lived in both countries, uh, lived in Israel for about five years after high school. And I can tell you that Gordis is, you know, he, he touches a lot upon the issue of the reform and conservative denominations as well as reconstructionist the, the denomination of Judaism not getting uh, their their um rec their they, they don't get their rights recognized in Israel that meaning that if you have a marriage within a reformed temple uh, to my knowledge I think you have to get remarried in Israel okay I might be wrong about that if you have gone through such an you know such a process Feel free to put it in the comments um, if you have knowledge of this or something. If you're, you know, and and obviously I don't expect everyone who's watching this video to have real deep understanding of, of the issue. It's a little bit of a nebulous issue that I think is um, it's kind of a niche problem. But uh, the truth is that we, you know, and Gordas talks about this as well. The philosophical roots of both countries are extremely different, right? The United States was founded on the values of the British Enlightenment, right? It, is, it was more of a British Enlightenment state than the United Kingdom the, of Britain, right? Because while the UK remained a monarchy, the United States became, became a republic it established full separation of church and state, at least within constitutional bounds. And I know there's some people who are Christian who say, well, it was it was only limited. And, and even in that case, OK, the United States did not make a priority, uh, you know, a state religion that favored one church or another. It didn't favor Anglicanism or it didn't favor, um, you know, Calvinism or Presbyterianism or Congregationalism. It didn't favor any one. So. In that sense, the United States' religious foundation is much more different than Israel's, which did, in fact, establish itself as the Jewish state. And even at its founding, which Gordas goes into, David Ben-Gurion, who was the first prime minister, and he had, he had been basically the leader of the Jewish community in the British Mandate of Palestine before 1948, uh, he made a compact with the leaders of the religious communities in Israel, the, the Orthodox Jewish community, granting them many rights, especially over marriage. I think they have rights over burial and over various other uh, c you know, civic statuses for Israeli citizens, meaning that um, the state does not have, there's no civil marriage, for example. There is, um, it's very difficult from what I've heard to have for things like a cremation performed in Israel because cremation is prohibited, strictly prohibited in, in, in Judaism. And in fact, I think even the more progressive denominations discourage it. Um, there is no, there's no gay marriage. There's, uh, there's limited, very limited abortion, okay, because there are certain exceptional cases of abortion in Israel, but um, there it's not quite, it, I would say it's a little bit in limbo. I heard that it's actually easier to get an abortion there than it is here, uh, but it's not, it's not as if you can just walk into a clinic and say, hey, you know, I need an abortion. So in any case, um, these these are issues where the state has delegated a lot of those powers to religious authorities and therefore when a person who is jewish american goes over there and may want to settle down 
they might have some friction because they may have, you know, they may have already been married in a in a civil ceremony here in the United States. They be may be married to a non-Jew, right? And and this is a religious issue. It's not an ethnic issue. If the non-Jewish person had converted to Judaism, it would be a fully so. Let's say you're you're Jewish and your and your husband is, I don't know, um, you know, Norwegian or whatever, right? Uh, if your Norwegian husband has converted to Judaism, it's not really an issue so long as it's been fully documented and which I guess I guess it's with a list of approved rabbis and all that. So it's it's a religious issue that people have problems with if they move over there. Um, so those are the types of things that have caused you know several layers of friction between the Jewish American community and the state of Israel. One being the notion that Israel is showing itself, you know, that there's this notion that they are presenting themselves as the real Jews and, and then the Jewish Americans are being, you know, they feel that they're being, um, I guess, uh, what, what's the word? They're being given short shrift as being less so because they're sacrificing less they're being you know they, they feel that the that in many cases the israeli jews are because they, they have a more i guess warrior like image that they are showing themselves to be the stronger jew whereas the american jewish seem to be more geeky more you know neurotic more weak and and he goes into this talking about a philip roth novel i think it was um i forget what it was but uh it was certainly one of his one of the ones from the 70s so the, these um issues so so there's that issue there's the one with um you know the ritual acceptance in israel on the part of progressive denominations and then there's the issue of which community is the lead community, whether it's the American community or the one in Israel. And then, of course, there's the one of the progressive objection to Israeli policies in the West Bank and Gaza. So those are just some of the layers that it goes into. So um, beyond that, I would say, like, I don't know if Gordis necessarily would agree with what I'm about to say right now, but I think he, he sort of hints at it. The arc of, of the future, in my opinion, for American Jewish um, life is going to be very different in at least, you know, within 10 or 15 years, right? So if you look at the public image of American Jews right now, um, you see a very prominent contingent of liberal very famous very wealthy people um people like Je like uh mark zuckerberg and um you know all these people who are on tv uh you know off the top of my head i mean who who, who would be like a good example like andy is the guy's name andy cone from bravo or uh chuck lorry the tv producer people like that so um there's a lot of those people howard stern that they see themselves as being the real representatives of the Jewish community in America because they they have the power, they have the wealth, the wealth, and they have the fame. But and and this is something I'm I'm saying to everyone here, okay? Whether you're uh, not Jewish or you are Jewish, I believe in within 10 to 15 years, a lot of that um, substrate of of people, a, a lot of that uh, class of very powerful people they're going to sort of fade away. Like Howard Stern is sort of at the tail of end of his career. Um, a lot of these other people, you know, fame is very fleeting, right? At a, at a certain point, everybody gets uh, passed over and they have to yield to a new generation. So in terms of the future for the community at large, you have to look at what's really going on. A lot of these families that that grew up within the progressive jewish denominations have maybe two children if that and there's plenty of childless couples and there's plenty of couples that are you, you know there's plenty of single people there's plenty of you know ones that never get married there's plenty of people who 
they um you know there's gay couples in the in in the in that area there's people who are from interfaith families right the in general reform and conservative judaism is slipping away demographically they're losing their youth most of their youth doesn't really get into the practice or um belief system of of, of either of those faiths because there there really isn't that much to it it's sort of um it's become very superficial a lot of it's been substituted for um you know just generic progressive beliefs so in my mind uh you know they're going to have to go undergo a metamorphosis and i don't know what it's going to be right um in many of these congregations they have you know they have very ornate and expensive facilities they have they have some of them have synagogues that are or, or temples that are are very luxurious and but but there's nobody to go to them they're virtually empty it's 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 a well-known phenomenon especially where i live okay in ohio but you go to many of these cities in in the midwest and and uh, you know maybe on the coast that there, there's a little bit more participation especially in california i heard that there's there's at least some but um they're fading and the denominations that are growing the most are ones that are the the orthodox and especially the orth, ultra orthodox and i can tell you from experience you know having traveled a little bit been you know been to israel been to some of these towns that are you know much more heavily orthodox um especially a couple in in new york new york state uh upstate new york uh those those are actually growing because you have families that are having seven eight nine even a dozen kids right so there's no like yes is there a possibility that some of those kids are going to leave the faith become absolutely you know non-practicing and and just live uh, a completely secular life yeah that that happens i know people who who, who's, who, who have had, had gone through that sort of uh, change i've seen people who have gone the other way i've seen people who started out secular and they grew to be much more religious the, that type of thing happens routinely there's people who come in there's people who go out but if you're talking about just the raw population growth within the progressive communities it's it's not happening there's not enough children being born with it and they're not being raised within those values and with, within the ultra orthodox community it's happening at a rate that's much larger than in general so you are going to see a larger proportion of the general Jewish community being Orthodox within the next 10 to 15 years. And, and it's already been happening, um, you know, for I, I'd say the past 30 years. Now it's going to be literally uh, in, in overdrive. Right. So you're just going to see a very strong change. And does it affect the relationship between the American Jewish community and the and the and Israel not really because uh, first of all there is criticism of Israel within the Orthodox community from from a different more religious perspective but also the institutions and this is the important thing the institutions of American Jew, Jewish uh, life you know the JCRCs and the AJC and um, you know the ADL and all those institutions they're not responsive to actual um, you know, to the rank and file people. It's just like if, if you're in a labor union, in many cases, the union leadership is almost completely detached from the reality of day-to-day -day life. They live a separate reality. You live yours. And it's almost as if you, you know, you, you don't, you barely even know each other. And that is the way that I'm seeing the American Jewish community right now. And it's something that Gordas has, himself talks about. It's something that I've talked about with other people, people who aren't even in any way connected to this topic. So as a, you know, I think this is a great, um, you know, background text to get into some of these issues that he's talking about. Look at some of the lesser known problems of the past, you know, from the 40s, 50s and 60s of, um, you know, the relationship between the two communities. And really sort of uh, start, start to see that there there's a lot of nuance, a lot of differences within the American Jewish community. We're not the monolith that a lot of our critics see us as.
So that's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also subscribe to me on YouTube and on Minds.com as well as Subscribestar. Um, you can find me on Gab at Starscream85 and on Parlor at Razor Ray. But uh, I still encourage you subscribe to me on BitChute and on Rumble. Okay, those are two other video sharing platforms or on my favorite one, which is on Library. And I'll talk to you later. Have a great night.